hello gemini welcome to your reading now this is something new that i have started i'm dividing the month into three parts and i'm going to be looking at your general love and career energies for 10 10 days at a time and this is your reading for the first 10 days of april please remember that this is a general reading and it's not going to resonate for all of you please only take the bits that do resonate and leave the rest behind for somebody else also make sure you check all your placements uh sun moon rising and venus especially if you're here for love do check your venus sign uh you may find that it resonates more than your sun or your rising all right and um I did recently upload your overall April reading, so you may want to check those out. Your wisdom of the oracle is to the sea. Are you guys taking a vacation? <laughs> Let's get you a monology. We will see. Attend to the details. Last quarter moon in Virgo. This card just wants to keep popping up for everyone. I don't get it. Finally, let's get you a star code. Ascendant. Entrance. Nice. Some of you may have Gemini as your ascendant. But I'm loving the color match on these cards. Anyway, uh, let's start with your wisdom of the oracle number seven. With go to the sea, this for me is six of swords energy. This is a card of almost um, changing course. There may have been chaos and conflict uh, in your life. And I feel like some of you are either hermitizing yourselves, either just going on a solo vacation to collect your thoughts. Um, but I feel like most of you are trying to maintain peace in your life now she is on a paper boat so this could mean that this is a short journey uh metaphorically as well as literally so it could be a short trip that you're undertaking maybe towards a body of water and some of you may even be embarking on a short healing journey take it how it resonates and I'm also looking at the binoculars right here, which is reminding me of your monology. Attend to the details. I feel like you're not brushing things under the rug. You are looking at every single aspect of your life and making sure you refine and polish whatever you need to. And with Ascendant, I feel the way you show up in the world is shifting. And I've noticed this energy for you before. I feel like with the Ascendant card, you're changing your vernacular of how people see you, how you speak to people, how you converse with them. You may be changing your tone of voice. And if anyone can do that successfully, Gemini, it's you guys because you're ruled by Mercury, right? And I have my Venus and Mercury in Gemini, so I completely get this energy of uh, amalgamating yourself to your environment. And one of the most beautiful qualities of a Gemini is that you can gel with just about anybody because you get how people think. You understand how their brains work, right? And this is not a manipulation tactic. No, this is about speaking to somebody the way they will understand you. And I don't know why I'm getting that with the Ascendant card because your Ascendant is basically your rising sign. It is how people view you. It's the energy you bring with you when you enter a room for the first time. So I feel like it's almost like the sun is shining on your Ascendant and you are being seen. Being seen for who you really are because there is so much wisdom that you've gained with you from your interactions with people. Vague, I know, slightly, but let's see. I had promised myself I'll keep these readings short to 10 minutes a sign because, I mean, the energy changes so quickly and 10 days is really not much. Um, but yeah, they're all moving to like 20 minutes plus. So there we go. There's nothing I can do. That was such a weird flip. This card was, I wonder what it is. Nice. Mercurial energy. Oh, the Hierophant. Four of Cups. 
Interesting. Let's get three cards for Korea. Page of Wands. King of Wands. Four of Swords. Oh. Interesting. Let's get three cards for Love. We have, I don't read reversals, guys, sorry. We have the star, the seven of cups, and we have the queen of swords, your energy. All right, let's skim over these. I will get bridging cards. I need to adjust my camera first. I hate it when this happens. There we go. Now, with the four of cups in your general energy, there is something you are not looking at. Um... It's almost like this sense of, uh, this could be a relationship, it could even be a higher commitment to a particular project at work. It could even be a job offer. But you're not looking at it for some reason. You're like, it's not good enough for me. We will see. With the Hierophant, this could talk about that higher commitment. It could talk about spiritual knowledge as well. It could talk about all the wisdom that you've gained through life. The wisdom that I was talking about. The wisdom that you've gained and realizing that you deserve more. Again, whether in career or in love, we will see. And with the magician, I feel like you're realizing your power. You're realizing that your words, vibration, frequency and energy is potent. Potent enough to create your own reality. Let's get a few bridging cards. We have the Knight of Cups. Whoa, okay, strange. I mean, not strange, but for some of you, there could be almost like a proposal coming in. And I don't usually get that with just the Knight of Cups, but we have it touching the Hierophant. So this could be either an offer for a higher commitment in terms of a relationship. It could be a marriage proposal for some of you. And for some of you, it could also be a job opportunity coming about that isn't very... It may not seem very solid because you being an air sign, you um, prioritize cerebral power over anything else. I feel like it may come across as a little wishy-washy to you. So you're just like, no, I don't want it. Okay, let's get a few more. Knight of Swords. <laughs> you remember I said you prioritize cerebral power? That's what you want. You want Knight of Swords energy. You don't want Knight of Cups energy. You want this offer to be laced with a little more wisdom and intellect than just gooey love. Hmm. Five of Swords. There's no shortcut to success, Gemini. If something isn't coming about the way you expect it to, doesn't mean that it may not actually be fruitful. Love or career, take it how it resonates. I feel like whatever this offer is that is coming about can be very balanced. It can take you to a higher level. It can help you ascend. And I feel like you need to attend to the details of this before dismissing it. The five of swords can be an energy of knowing your power as the magician but it can also be a sense of overconfidence. I don't like to call out my viewers, but then again, I wouldn't be a very good reader if I sugarcoat everything. With the Five of Swords, I don't think this is the energy of the person coming in or the offer coming in. This is you. This is you almost like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound. Kind of. Not a great metaphor to use, but you know what I mean. Dig a little deeper. Whatever this offer is, in love or in the workplace, it can be beneficial. I'm going to get one more card on top of this. The Empress. It'll help you grow. It'll help you expand. It'll help you blossom. Don't dismiss it. All right. Career. Seven of Wands. Now, the Four of Swords can talk about keeping to yourself. It is, for me, the minor arcana of the Hermit energy. It can talk about uh, not really sharing too many details in the workplace and just 
kind of doing you. Some of you may have been betrayed in your particular career lives and I feel like that has it, it's that energy of once bitten twice shy. So you're keeping your ideas to yourself. I'm also getting that with um, the seven of wands right here. Because you she, see, she's reached that, she's reached the highest island, right? And it's almost like she has that upper hand. And all these people below her are still struggling to reach that apex. So I feel like there has been competition in the workplace here. And earlier, you may have been keen to help, eager to help. But you're finally realizing your power as the king of wands. And you're realizing that the more energy you put into your passion and the more you keep to yourself when it comes to this particular passion, the more successful you will be. For some of you, I am also getting that you have reached that pinnacle, you've reached that apex, so you finally deserve a break. You deserve to go to the sea, maybe take a vacation. Uh, it is possible. But with the King of Wands, I see you being very enthusiastic about your career path. With the Three of Wands, the Three of Wands is usually a card of waiting to invest in something, waiting to begin something afresh. But in this particular card, it talks about knowing where to invest your energy. This frog can't possibly sit on every single ship in front of him. He has to pick one. So with the King of Wands and the Three of Wands, I feel like you need to pick between either multiple job opportunities or project opportunities maybe you have to see where which particular area of your career life deserves more time energy attention and even money and I, I feel like don't try and put your eggs in too many baskets okay don't put them all in one and you being you Gemini I don't think you can do that but still don't overextend yourself all right Two of Pentacles. Okay, this is very interesting. With the Page of Wands. Some of you may be hiring trainees or interns or, you know, someone to help you out. Why I'm getting that is, now, this is an alchemist. And an alchemist is, well, a magician, right? He is trying to very carefully balance two of his masterpieces, two of his creations that are very delicate. But he is in a sea vessel and there are waves crashing about outside the window. The waves in, in this particular deck represent emotion. Water in general represents emotion. I feel like some of you may be feeling overwhelmed. And you may have been overextending yourself, like I said. Some of you may need to hire people. And with the page of wands, I feel like there is almost a fresh face that could be coming about for you. Who could be of assistance, I feel. Um, and that's what I'm getting here as well. I'm getting very strongly that you guys are hiring and you may be coming about with this Knight of Cups energy, somebody who's very sweet and very eager to help but may lack the wisdom but if you dig a little deeper and attend to the details, maybe go through their resume again, you realize with the King of Swords that they actually do possess that wisdom and they can almost help you blossom your business very specific for someone but take it how it resonates and with the two of pentacles it's almost like they can help you with that juggle they can help you balance and it they can even help you bring about a work-life balance so you can actually take a break it's about trusting an energy other than yourself to handle things for you just gonna get one more ten of swords yeah you have been betrayed in the past and I feel like for some of you, you've literally started something of your own from the ground up. Because the Ten of Swords is an energy of an ending that leads to a new beginning. So it's, it might be difficult for you to trust people very easily. But I feel like whoever this is, you might just be able to trust them. Anyway, let's move to love. We have the Knight of Wands. Ooh. This is a very in and out energy. The Knight of Wands can be very passionate. It can be somebody who's very energetic and driven and good looking even. But I feel like with the Seven of Cups, they're coming about with a lot of confusion. And with the Star card, you're almost like, I don't need this BS in my life. Leave me be. 
this, this is literally what I'm getting. And with the Queen of Swords, you're being you. You're sitting in your wisdom and your intellect and it's almost like your third eye is open because you see the third eye in her palm right here. You're awoke. You're, you're like, no, I've seen this shit before. I don't want it. I feel like this person, whoever this is, if this is somebody from the past or it is somebody coming in for you, uh, they may be coming about with a very disillusioned kind of energy of, I have so many options, look at me, look at me. But I am uh, laser focused on you, Gemini. But I think you know the truth about this person. You're like, no, I don't want this. This is crap. I think this is that offer that you may not be looking at. Let's dig a little deeper. Could be an Aquarius coming in. Okay, we have the Eight of Swords. Yeah, this person puts you in your head. I need more. The lovers, my goodness, Gemini, that's your energy. We officially have three nights. I feel that this person is just very misguided. The feelings that they have for you are strong because the lovers is not going to show up for just anybody. We even have Cancer Pisces energy. I feel that in the past, they may have come about with a very wishy-washy, in and out, one foot out the door kind of energy, but they're almost balancing themselves. They're balancing themselves with love, wisdom and passion. With the lover's card, this may have been a third party situation in terms of there may have been a choice. This could very well just have been three different people. <laughs> Gemini, if you're lucky enough, this could have been three different people. And yeah, very well because of the seven of cups. There may have been too many options for you to choose from. And that put you in your head. And with the moon card, it's almost like you didn't want to look at it because there was so much haze surrounding this. Everything was just hidden. There was no clarity. The, the lovers in the original uh, tarot way back then was called the choice. And I feel like whatever these options are in love, you're focusing on your growth regardless of anything else. You are your own priority. You're also attending to the details of your relationships. Because of your ascendant card, you are probably asking yourself the right questions about who you are and who you want to uh, be with. What kind of partner complements you and completes you almost, in a sense. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. We don't need someone to complete us. But our ascendant is us. And the opposite of that is the descendant, which is the seventh house which talks about our partnerships, about people who may be completely different from us, but they come into our lives to almost help us balance ourselves. So you may be prioritizing your partnerships based upon what you may lack as an individual. None of us are perfect. Okay. So maybe you lack in the emotions department. All right. And you focus more on intellect and wisdom. You may be focusing on attracting a partner who balances that part of you. It is possible. And I feel like that's what's putting you in your head. You don't know what to choose, what to pick, how to move ahead with this. Temperance. These next 10 days may not be the right time to make a decision. This could even be a Sagittarius coming in for you guys. But I feel like just lay low. We do have the King of Swords at the bottom of the deck. That's quite interesting. So you may even be attracting another air sign like yourself. But two of swords right under that. This might not be a good time to make any decisions. I think with the temperance card into the sea, I think you guys just need to take a break. Uh, and with the four of swords as well. Apart from the ten of swords, I don't see too much pain here. I feel like you're carrying yourself very gracefully. And you are sitting in your power. You're realizing your strength. But... When we are incapable of making decisions, it is better to not. 10 days is a very short time frame. I'm sure you can just stay put, right? All right, let's get you a couple of tea leaves. We have November. 
could be dealing with a Scorpio or a Sagittarius, like I said. But um, something may have transpired in November where you may have started shifting the way you look at the details of your life, the way you look at things. Uh, but November seems significant. It could also relate to the Ten of Swords right here, where whatever this loss was that you endured, um, it's almost like it's in the past. Don't need to think about it anymore. And we have Valley, deep personal strength and peace that assure success. Nice. I feel that once you take a little bit of you time and you realize your strength as the, as the empress and the magician, I feel like peace, once peace is prioritized, that is when you'll be able to clear your head with this eight of swords nonsense and just truly make clear decisions, get away from this disillusioned energy. And Valley again is reminding me of travel. I feel like you guys really need to just take a short trip somewhere. Oh, wow, that was weird. I'm not going to take so many, but okay. Pineapple, reconciliation. Mm, some of you may be reconciling with the past energy. It's possible that one of these options that would be coming in towards you could be somebody from the past who hasn't been able to forget you. It is likely. Hat, you will be playing a different role. I like that and I love that this is here because of your Ascendant card. You remember I said you are changing how people see you. You are changing your love language, you're changing your work vernacular, you're changing um, your energy field. And I feel like these different roles that you may be playing, if anyone can embrace that, it is you Gemini. Because you, you can mirror people beautifully. So. I feel like you may see a shift, personality shift, for the better. I like that. All right. I hope this helped you, Gemini. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.